Chapter 17, Reproductive Systems. The gonads in males are the testes and they produce the sperm and testosterone. Gonads in the females or ovaries and produce eggs and the hormones estrogen and progesterone. Reproductive strategies differ between males and females. Males produce millions of sperms and deliver them to the female reproductive system. In females typically produce one egg which the egg contains the early nutrients uh, going to be required for early development before the placenta is formed and can take over and the female reproductive system is designed to nourish and protect the developing offspring. Each gamete contains one half the number of chromosomes so 23 from the sperm and 23 from the egg. So when these fuse, they form a zygote, which reconstitutes the diploid state of 46 chromosomes. Structures of the male reproductive system uh, that we will be exploring are testes, the duct system, including the epididymis, vas deferens, and the urethra the accessory glands, including the prostate gland, seminal vesicle, and buboretho glands, and the penis. This slide just shows the location of each of the structures that we will be uh, talking about further within the reproductive system for the males. The testes are held outside the abdominal cavity in a structure called the scrotum. This is necessary to allow for temperature regulation needed for healthy sperm to develop. Sperm develop in the seminiferous tubules and cells within the seminiferous tubules called interstitial cells produce the androgens including uh, the hormone testosterone. Testicular cancer is the most common form of cancer among young men ages 15 to 35 years of age. Does not uh, usually cause pain, so uh, males should also do uh, monthly self-examinations. There's a high cure, uh, almost 100% cure rate when caught in early stages. Uh, testicular cancer is more likely to occur in men whose testes did not descend into the scrotum or descended after the age of six. And this just shows uh, the vas deferens, the epididymis, the seminiferous tubules where sperm is produced within the testes. The duct system includes the epididymis, the vas deferens, and the urethra. The epididymis receives sperm from the seminiferous tubules and it's the site where sperm is going to ma mature and also to be stored. The vas deferon is going to be uh, the structure that conducts sperm from the epididymis to the urethra and the urethra in the males conducts both urine from the urinary bladder as well as conduct sperm from the vas deferens. Semen is the fluid containing sperm and secretions of the accessory glands and it's released through the urethra at sexual uh, climax. Accessory glands are the prostate gland. The prostate gland surrounds the upper portion of the urethra and produces an alkaline secretion. This alkaline secretion serves to activate sperm and help reduce the acidity of the male and female reproductive tracts. Prostate cancer typically affects older men. An enlarged prostate may squeeze the urethra and restrict urine flow. Um, Age-related enlargement is also a condition that can affect the prostate gland beginning about middle age. Uh, uh, prostate gland cancer, it can be detected through rectal exam 
or a blood test that's going to measure a specific antigen called prostate specific antigen. As a tumor increases, so does the level of the PSA. Accessory glands, the seminal vesicles or paired, uh, or paired glands, their secretions nourish the sperm, have, have fructose in it for nourishment. They have amino acids that serve to thicken the semen, as well as they have prostaglandin that we've studied uh, from past chapters. These assist movement of the sperm in the female reproductive tract by causing uh, contractions movement. Prostaglandins, as you may recall, are lipid molecules that are released by the plasma uh, membrane of many cells. The prostaglandins help to cut the viscosity of the female cervical mucus and also cause uterine contractions that aid in the sperm movement. Accessory glands, the buboerythral glands, they're also called the Cowper's glands. They also are a paired glands. They release a clear, slippery liquid uh, just prior to ejaculation that may rinse the, serve to rinse the acidic urine from the urethra. The penis is the male organ that delivers the sperm to the female reproductive tract. There's the glans penis, which is the tip of the penis with many sensory nerve endings. The glans penis is uh, the region that's important in sexual arousal. Uh, the glans penis is covered by the foreskin, which is sometimes surgically removed to circumcision. It also contains three columns of spongy erectile tissue, which fills with blood during an erection. Arterioles dilate, allowing the tissue to fill with blood and the penis to enlarge. At the same time that the expanding spongy, spongy tissue squeezes the veins shut that uh, drain the penis, thus allowing the erection to occur. Erectile dysfunction is the inability to achieve or maintain an erection causes range from psychological issues to damaged nerves or blood vessels. There's many medications out there that can prolong the effects of nitric oxide, which promotes the widening of arteries in the penis. Uh, nerve damage uh, often accompanies chronic alcoholism or diabetes. Fatty deposits in arteries can affect blood flow other factors may be medications such as high blood pressure medication, sedatives, antidepressants, even cigarette smoking, um, or marijuana. Sperm development uh, is spermatogenous and occurs within the seminiferous tubules. Spermatogenous reduces the number of chromosomes to one member of each pair. And also during spermatogenesis, it also changes the shape of the sperm so that they can deliver the chromosomes. The stages in spermatogenesis is spermatogonia, which are undifferentiated diploid cells. Next stage would be the primary spermatocyte that the diploid cell undergoes two divisions of meiosis. The secondary spermatocyte is after meiosis I, and the spermatids is after meiosis II, where it's uh, now in a dip, uh, haploid state. Spermatozoa exhibit structural changes that's necessary for reaching the egg and fertilizing it. It's a process from initial spermatogonia to mature spermatozoa takes approximately two months. Spermatozoa and sperm are the same uh, terminology. And this just shows the seminiferous tubules where sperm is um, uh, produced and the different stages that it goes through to become uh, viable sperm. 
The mature sperm has three regions. It contains the head, which contains the uh, genetic information from the male. Around the edge of the head, there's a, a structure called the acrosome. This is just a sac that's covering the head that has enzymes that's going to assist in egg penetration. The acrosome membranes, these enzymes that they release, break down a few hours after sperm uh, deposition. And so these enzymes digest the cell layers surrounding the egg, allowing uh, the sperm to enter the egg and fertilization to occur. The midpiece contains mitochondria, and this region is important for uh, providing the metabolic energy. And then the tail is the flagella, which acts to propel the sperm with a whipping-like motion. So this shows the whip-like movements of the tail that propel the sperm. That's the flagella. The midpiece containing the mitochondria that's going to provide the uh, ATP, the energy to fill the trip to the egg. The head containing the father's chromosomes, haploid, his genetic information or his genetic contribution to the offspring. And the acrosome, the sac that covers the head of the sperm containing those enzymes that's going to act to digest the outer layer of the female's egg so that fer fertilization can occur.